Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Good. Welcome back. And uh, um, we, we've um, been getting uh, some great feedback from your um, respective presentations. Uh, and obviously anything that you can reference further from uh, Yelp's contribution. Uh, we've got you know, your story, Mikael, from a, um, an enterprise-wide uh, large organization strategy, Alan's pragmatism of working with um, a suite of different types of uh, um, API uh, problem spaces in different sized organizations, and uh, uh, Yarp's perspective from Rubric uh, actually um, you know, uh, down at the, the call face, if you like, of the, of the delivery. Um, we, we had a question from uh, Gautam at um, WordPress we didn't get a chance to answer earlier. Um, uh, maybe um, uh, one of you would like to just start out and uh, um, uh, discuss this debate of are we at risk of API management tooling becoming a complexity of more tech for tech? Um, so uh, the, you know, the, the, the reference to different types of API management solutions coming through for security, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is this uh, you know, uh, a good or a bad thing. So, so I'm sure we could spend 25 minutes just on the topic, but mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Alan, you could uh, give some, uh, your, well, with some perspectives. I, I remember, um, you know, looking at the tech stack behind APG back in, I don't know, 2014 or something like this. And, uh, and I could see then that it was already this thing that they didn't, you know, build all the software themselves. They basically took the best of the internet uh, stitched it all together and, and produced APG, right? Um, I, I'm not certain where they're at today, if it's a little bit more in-house or what, but but basically this is where the internet has been running for a long time anyway. You, maybe you don't see it, but especially like with a lot of the more open source um, tooling out there, a lot of companies have decided to to have the underlying architecture uh, based on, on some very good open source projects and they build on top of that, right? But again, when they present their product to you with their features, et cetera, you don't really see what's underneath it, but there's a lot of stuff going on and uh, it's stitched together. And um, I, I don't really see, see the, I don't really see the, the problem with that. Um, as long as you're like, you're on top of it and, and you know who to go to for support, et cetera. So if it's best, of course, if you just have one single point of contact for your support, who can then you know drive the conversation in, in, in the background, I, I would say is the, the only thing you need to keep a, an eye on. But other than that, it's, it's for me, business as usual. Michael, if you, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, and one of the problems with this is of course, how fast everything moves. So as soon as you select something, there is something else popping up, uh, which might be even better or, you know, something is newer or yeah, something is different and you want that as well. So I, I'm thinking like planning from the start, how can you get out of this? Because you would eventually like to shift in some way. So, uh, but it's also hard because then you can probably not utilize all services because it has some you know, deeper features. Uh, so it's a really tricky path. And I think that just sticking with one tool or one whatever, it's going to be hard going forward. Yeah, I think this strategy, uh, certainly we hear more and more of, of uh, um, how to um, create this, this, this vendor um, uh, sort of a flexible adaptability, really. I mean, the, you know, that's very much at the essence, I think, of your strategy at Telia. Um, with APIs at the heart, and, you know, for the organisation, it'd be great to hear more about how you've, you know, played played that out with the with the team because um, uh, obviously getting you know getting hardwired into ways of working and standards um, at, at all levels becomes out of date so quickly. Um, yeah, it's super easy to get stuck with stuff, and you don't have a way out. Uh, so it's. I think you, what you really need is to make sure that you have good developers in your team because they can actually solve this. It's For me, it's the developers that does this magic kind of things. And, and if you're just trying to be, you know, process oriented, you're going to be in trouble sooner or later because then you don't have the skill to actually shift things the way you want to. Yeah, but that's true. And, uh, Michael, I also had a, um, a question for you about the, um, 
the dev portal part of things from your presentation I was watching, you, you mentioned um, that you have developers who come along and they share stuff with their customers. Could you give a, um, an example of that, exactly how that, that worked? Yeah, we, we have uh, so, uh, some of the products uh, which we have are not intended but not for everyone. So mainly we have bigger customers that want uh, a custom API just for them. So we kind of built an API uh, and share it with only like a major company. Uh, so we have like set up the, the portal in different layers. So we have uh, kind of three layers, whereas the one is internal, only the Telia people see it. Then we have a middle layer, which is for a partner where you can build a partner group and they, they can go into that uh, level and see only those APIs. And then we, of course, have the open APIs for, for everyone. So, uh, and often it goes when you have a, a partner API that you want to build custom documentation because that it's more than a swagger uh, documentation that you need. You need to explain the case and the business and everything. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's how we think about that, that we, we need, probably need more layers and more groups. And um, we've just lost your video. Um, uh, can you still hear us okay then? I, I can hear him okay as well. So um, we just we okay. can't, can't see, you, see your, um, your video. So not sure if that's... Uh, um, anyway, if you can uh, continue to, to join via audio, that, that, that'd be great. Um, you were talking with us uh, about um, you know, the, 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 the brand of the developer portal um, effectively being questioned really from uh, you know, perspective of thinking more broadly as a, as a, as a digital um, perspective, um, given the type of user community. How, how much do you think that is relevant for this sort of three layer approach that Michael's talking, Mikhail's talking about? We can't see you or hear you. I'm um, still here. Oh, there you are. We yeah. So, uh, kind of just to, to, to um, push back, um, when we talk about percentage of um, your users on your, your, uh, your portal, Michael, um, are we talking like vast majority of them are internal? Or are most of them like partners or external? Where would you say you, you put most of your uh, energy into that? Uh, at the moment, on the the internal users, that's. Uh, uh, but I guess that's also a maturity level on how good uh, the APIs are if they are really made to be open or not. So I, a majority is internal still, but of course we have the the vision that. Everything should be open. Yeah, when it comes to you talking about doing like specific um, specific APIs for specific customers, right? Um, so I remember this from my time in telecommunications as well. This is sometimes you know you have to do these things, but how do you deal with the problem of technical debt mounting up? Because one of the biggest problems I had with my team is that they were spending like 80% of their time working on supporting all the stuff that we built um, in, in like, you know, DevOps fashion, right? You build it, you fix it. And they were, they were working on, on fixing things all the time. And, uh, and I had to spend like basically one year trying to get to a situation where the team had enough free time to build new things, right? To get away from like old versions. And do, do you have like a strategy in place or some, some ideas about how to do that? Yeah, that's the that's the like million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's super hard to maintain something and also build a new one, uh, and especially when you come from a bigger company. I think uh, I think you had the same issue. There is a, a lot of things happening behind the API, so you always sit and refactor and refactor things within mm -hmm. the API because of that as well. Uh, so I think again that. There is no, you, you need good developers. That's what I've seen that the only success to have developers which can manage this and that are actually faster than, you know, the world around you. 
so I, absolutely i 100 percent agree with that great developers are are you know essential i, I think with the developers so you also have to make sure that you give them the right vision right hmm. um i mean how, how do you get that part done so i spoke about our ap product internal products especially we use them a lot at wiscom as well do you have like you know Similar strategy, are you doing everything as a product or, or do you have some, some sort of hybrid approach or how do you do that? Oh, I see everything. And I guess you, you've seen that too, that you know, there are projects, there are someone, some APIs turning into more products uh, and some are actually products. Uh, but uh, I think that's also what you said that building the portal and, and keep on pushing that we're building products. Yeah. And, and I think that's something we need to keep on pushing. And uh, yeah. that, that's really critical. So um, ah. I don't know what's your, your take on that, how, how to share that. I might um, just uh, um, uh, look over to the, the chat, Mikael. I've had a question from Daniela Secondi at Pipedrive. is asking about what kind of um, APIs Technically speaking, uh, do you work with mainly Atelier? So um, what's the sort of technical? Uh, a lot of it is to uh, make uh, legacy uh, systems uh, available over APIs. So we, we have, uh, you know, all these older solutions within the telecom industry, uh, and they are tricky to integrate to. So that's, that, that's a... a Big benefit if you can kind of put the product API in front of those. And uh, is that uh, the, you know that um, integration driver that you have uh, behind the, the the business rationale for these internal APIs? Is that primarily a speed um, of uh, you know enabling the organization to change faster, or is it um, a driver more around uh, you know breadth of you know ability to be able to offer different types of customer experiences and offers? Or all of those. <laughs> I would say it's a two two sided mainly. One is that where where you need to internally be faster and you know get rid of the old systems and, and APIs is a great way of doing that. But we also have a lot of customers coming in requesting they want to have the service that we provide over an API, or they will try to find it somewhere else. So in that case, we need to build it. And I guess that's what Alan has been working quite a lot on with Swisscom as well. Yeah, yeah. I think at Swisscom, one one sort of major advantage we had is that you know in the C suite and the uh, director of development, um, especially they they stopped projects. Uh, we stopped doing projects. We went entirely to you know the whole Spotify tribe model, um, and, and basically the tribes were able to build what they wanted to build, right? So you still had to listen to the customer and you still got the money from the business. But ultimately, um, as I was leaving, uh, there weren't these massive projects running anymore. Uh, and we could concentrate on products and products were throughout the organization. So the billing tribe who, who historically were, you know, just this back end legacy type system running on Oracle, all of a sudden they, they had these, these product ideas that they could build and, and, and produce. And, you know, again, maybe they have something now um, like the payment API that they can expose externally and they run that. Um, but also they create, you know, these products for internal consumption, right? And, and they're using product as a vehicle to get things done because like I said in my presentation, just brings more value. If you have a project, um, you know, it's great for upper management to have control and see what's going on. But you know, it, projects, in my opinion, are not really delivering value, right? Uh, you know, 20% of the time, maybe, and then X percent are failing anyway. And, uh, you know, these, these projects, you, you got to stop them, right? You got to move towards more of a product uh, mentality. And then the whole agile thing works based on products. Let's face it, you know, product owner, you know, it's, it's in the title of the thing, right? If you have a project and your product owner is basically running that project, then something's gone wrong. So, you know, that in the DNA of Swisscom, you know, was, was fantastic to see that transformation, you know, just complete disruption, you know, complete change and definitely for the better, you know, they were, they were doing a really good job as I was leaving. Mm. 
No, fantastic to hear about you know actually making that uh, you know, the, 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 you know, this is the truly transformational change you know moving away from the security or perceived security of a project uh, construct, um, which you know for any of us that have been involved in projects over the years we know uh, is is really in some ways a perception. But um, I'd just like to um, uh, invite you to to um, reply to George Jeffcott's asked a question. Um, he's commented that there's a lot a lack of a lot of local great developers as a bottleneck, and Mikhail, you pointed out the importance of really thinking about getting the, the best engineers and, and uh, um, development capability. So the questions are, what do, they, what do they see that the industry is doing to remove this barrier? Um, this is probably a subject but fairly close to my own heart, actually. I, I believe that we have um, you know, a, a significant problem with attracting um, uh, pi you know, talent into the pipeline from schools um, all the way through to tertiary education and to the workforce. Um, for I'm particularly interested in the in, in gender um, lack of interest from, um, from from women in particular, from girls from an early age, um, and how many things that we have to be able to do over. Unfortunately, it's still going to be years before we can make a really um, I think you know make a really big dent. But I'd be be interested in the things that uh, you've each seen from your own experiences that that work in um, creating and building really good talent, or maybe finding it first. Yeah, I, I think from my experience, um, one of the challenges we've had is that okay, if you've got an API program for a developer, especially an enterprise, it's kind of like it's something they want to be a part of because it's it's quite interesting, especially if you're doing you know stuff like hackathons and things like that. It's kind of like it's got a good feeling. It should have a good feeling to it. If your API program is a bit dull, then you're doing something wrong because it's an opportunity to you know disrupt and do cool things, right? Um, so I find it quite easy to attract talent. And then when I had my, my team, I found that they would get very bored very quickly of the like API management tools and the, you know, like those flow designers that are based on XML, et cetera. They're there for six months, but they're like, hey, look, we're software engineers. We don't want to be doing this, right? That was one of the, uh, the biggest problems in, in terms of, um, you know, keeping the talent in the team and, and that's why we kind of looked to alternate uh, tools and said, okay, you can quad your um, self-organized, you can choose the tooling you wanna choose, right? So at Swisscom, we moved away from using like the Apigee tooling towards um, Spring Boot, for example. Um, also, that's one of the reasons why we produced the Redelk um, tool that you saw before as well in, in that it's based on IntelliJ idea, right? And developers love that. You know, they like to work with it, and uh, and so we we built that. You know, it's open source for the development community, and and that's um, you know, in in terms of retaining that um, talent and keeping them interested, that's the kind of thing that you have to do. And uh, well, I know the answer from George is that he wants like a a low coder um, <laughs> type type thing to come into play where you get the business owners and they're actually, you know, saying this is what I want and I'm actually going to do it as well, right? Uh, and and it's definitely um, a good idea there as well. Um, I, I think we need that generation Z, the Netflix generation to, you know, really come in and, and take it for granted that they're going to do it. My generation probably needs to go home and watch Red Dwarf and, and that's it. <laughs> Well, thank you, Alan. Um, Mikel, um, we had a question from Dion um, Jones on this theme. Um, Dion um, asked whether the problem with um, attracting talent or, key or maintaining it for companies that uh, um, are still, in his words, clinging tenaciously to their old tech stack <laughs> as uh, um, detracting from the kind of energy that Alan's referring to that can come from hackathons and, you know, latest tooling and freedom with open source. What are your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I fully agree. Who wants to be sitting with that old Oracle database and hacking that one, right? Uh, no, I think that one of the, the important thing here is uh, the agile thinking. Do your retros, uh, listen to your developers, and when they come up with new good ideas, bring them into the next print and let them try it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Being a product owner is really hard, I can tell. I often want to tell them, do this, do this. And uh, uh, it's, but stay away from that and, and let the developers, you know, try some new stuff and let them decide what to do. 
and I think that's a, a good way uh, forward. And I also think the pandemic is uh, kind of a good way of, you know, hire developers regardless of where they are. I mean, we're we're all yeah. practicing remote now, so mm. utilize that. Uh, yeah. You don't need to hire them. This is opening up for the world, um, you know, f fabulous opportunities. Um, but by the same token, you know, we've also, um, there are so now so many social responsibilities, human responsibilities for us, um, for people to, to have work um, in so, with so many industries. So um, uh, really impacted. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is creating a very, um, very new and different world for everyone in this arena. Yeah. Man. I think to you know also oh, answer sure. that question, I, I can also see um, again. I, I've mentioned Swisscom about twenty times now, but I, I really think what happened there was was something special in that. You know, we went from an organization that had like one hundred and forty enterprise architects, right? You couldn't do anything without an enterprise architect saying you could do it, right? They were like seen as a police force, uh, technology, what you used, etc. It was always given to you, and um, you had to get on with it, but. You know, they reduced that uh, team uh, down to like, I don't know, 20 architects or something in the end. Um, you still need a role of enterprise architects just to make certain all the, the pieces of the puzzle more or less work. But um, that work went instead to the developer. They were empowered, you know, autonomous teams. You want to use a different technology, go ahead and do it. You know, we don't care as long as you know what you're doing, right? You don't have to go up and down a hierarchy anymore. You want to start using, you know, a different tool within reason. You know, um, the company will buy something like APG and a license, right? So you're probably going to go and use that unless you've got a good case for an open source tool or something. But, you know, it's what everyone else is using, so so you use it. But ultimately, that's it. Given the developers, you know, good developers, give them the freedom to 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 make their own choices and do what they want to do. That's uh, uh, that's where you keep the, the best developers. Mm. Yeah, trust, trust, and trust. Yes. I mean, all of these, um, you know, at the end of the day, it is it's this culture behavior change, um, which, uh, you know, uh, are the ingredients um, for, for making these types of, you know, tra transformation successful. Um, and uh, APIs have such a, um, a, a critical role in the middle of that because, you know, they are the place where you have to have the, you know, you need the collaboration between the business. You need the deep understanding of, um, you know, new reimagined customer experiences and you need technology that's, you know, really simple, adaptable, data-driven, you, know, and, and, you know, and independent of a lot of legacy thinking. So um, it's, it becomes, you know, the, the, the obvious, um, if you like, creates the bar wave for the rest of the organization in demonstrating how these new behaviors and cultures and um, standards, you know, ways of working can come to life. So um, really fantastic to get um, both of your, uh, you know, enormous years of experience in this space of, of driving change. Um, and uh, being being at the we've got some um, really strong support in the uh, uh, online chat for um, uh, you know for, for for your feedback and thanks and um, we're, we're at time so um, uh, there's an opportunity for uh, everyone else to to take a little break for 20 minutes before we um, get back on on track and uh, thank you both Mikael and Alan really delighted to yes. see you thank um, you thank you great to be here yeah bye hey. thanks bye bye, -bye. bye. So just a reminder, everyone, um, we will be taking a short break now and uh, looking forward to getting, uh, so go and uh, arm yourselves with a cup of tea or a, um, uh, uh, something to eat. And we look forward to um, uh, seeing you shortly. Thank you all.